Hello programmers! This presentation covers how to do the first Java Lab with Objects and Inheritance. I will show you how to build the project using the Eclipse development system. Before you get started on the lab project, you should make sure you study the lecture material that covers classes, objects, and inheritance. I am providing the code to help you get started on the project. The code includes the class definitions for books and shirts and code in main to implement objects and test these objects. You need to create a class for pants that inherits from class clothes. Also update code in the main method books and clothing inheritance.java to add an array that contains at least three pants objects. Also Add code in main to display individual fields from the pants objects and also utilize the toString method to display fields as selected by the toString method. I am providing five files for you books and clothing inheritance.java, item.java, book.java, clothing.java, and shirt.java. This diagram shows the name and type of each member data. It also shows the inheritance tree starting at the top with the class item and its subclasses book and clothing. Shirt is inherited from clothing. The books and clothing inheritance class has an array of book objects and an array of shirt objects. It also has code to test and display information from each of these objects. The diagram is being updated to show the pants class definition. This is what you need to complete for the lab project. The pants class definition will be similar to the shirt class definition, except that it has two pieces of member data for length and waist. The string data type was needed for shirt so that it could hold letters L, M, and S for size. The pants class definition is to be written using type int for length and waist. This also means that code for the getters and setters need to process int data and the objects in main need to use int data type when defining the pants objects. Here is a sample program execution that displays individual fields and also displays data using the toString method. I have added an array of pants objects. I can see integers being used for length and waist when the pants objects are being instantiated. The sequence of data types for pants declaration for each object must match the data types for the constructor in the class definition. The way I have written the code for the pants constructor is pants open parentheses string type comma string brand comma int length comma int waist comma string color comma double price comma in stock close parentheses therefore when using this constructor the sequence of data types must be string string int int string double int I'm using the standard for loop to index through the array of book objects. The for loop is written as for open parentheses int i equals zero i less than book count semicolon i plus plus where, where book count is defined above in the code as the length of the array. Individual fields from the objects in the array book list are accessed using the name of the array and the square brackets to select the index in the array followed by a period to separate the object name from the field or access method. For example, book list, open square bracket two, close square bracket dot, get in stock, open close parentheses, selects the third item in the array, remember to count from zero, and calls the get in stock member method to retrieve the number of items in stock for that book. The next loop that displays shirt objects uses the enhanced for loop, which is very useful to automatically index through an array. The for loop is written as for open parentheses shirt s colon shirt underscore list close parentheses, which assigns s one object at a time as it moves through the array. Therefore, S dot get in stock open close parentheses will call the get in stock method for the first shirt in the array the first time in the loop and then call the get in stock method for the second shirt in the array the next time through the loop. This process will repeat itself until every item in the array has been processed. 
The enhanced for loop is cool when working with arrays, even though you could still index through the array using the standard for loop. I'm starting out Eclipse and I'm going to create a project, books, and close inheritance. File, new, project. I'll just use the wizard here. Next, project name, books and clothes inheritance. You can call it really anything you want. Finish. File, new, class. Name, books and clothes inheritance. That will be books and clothes inheritance.java. Now I need to go get the code from the website. Here it is. If I'm on Windows, I'll do Control A to select everything, or on the Mac, Command A. Then Control C or Command C to copy. Back over to Eclipse, select everything, and paste. I notice right here it has some underlines book and book list and these things aren't here yet because I don't have the class definition yet for a book. File, new, class, item. Public class item. Another thing to look at is here is the file name is item.java. The file name and the class name have to be exactly the same including the upper and lowercase characters. Back over to the browser. I'll do back and now I'm going to select item. Select all, copy. Back over to Eclipse. Select all, paste. And there it is. I'll do the same thing for book. Over here is a button on the toolbar. I just do click down and say I want class. I'm going to call this book. And now I have the code for book. Back arrow. Clothing. New class clothing. Select all and paste. Back over to the website. Back button. Shirt. Select all. Copy. New. Class. Shirt. Select all and paste. I should have everything there. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have all five files. I'm going to select books and clothing inheritance. Run as a Java application. I can see down here on the bottom is my console. I'm going to grab this window and move it over here to the right hand side and then shrink it down a little bit. And now I can see here's my output. So far I know that the code that was already provided works. Now what I need is new code for pants. So I'm going to say new class pants pants. What I do know is it's going to be similar to shirt. So I'm going to select all of this, go back over to pants, I'm going to paste it in here, make sure that the file name and the class name is the same, so it's going to be pants. And it's, it says extends clothing. Very good. String, well, I don't have a size now, private string size. What I want is length and waist. So here's a getter 
I don't have size anymore. I can't return size. What I need is get length and return length. It's a string here. Remember, I have to have this as an int. Get waste and return waste. Set size. Well, I don't have size. This is going to be an int. Set length. I'm receiving an int. Be lazy, copy this guy here and save this dot length equals length and return this dot length. String type, brand, size. Remember, I'm not using size anymore. I want int length, comma, int width. Back on the setters. Set waste. Now I need a setter for a copy and paste for waste. I used a capital W, used camel case to separate my English words, in waste. This dot waste equals waste and return this dot waste. For my constructor type, brand, I don't have string anymore, so I'm going to have an int length and int waste. So set the type, set the brand, set size, nope, set length and set length and set waste. Uh oh, doesn't like set length. Oh, did I misspell it? L E N. Oops, I sure did. Okay, set length and set waist. It doesn't like shirt because I'm creating pants, not shirt. So copy pants right here and say pants and pants for the constructors. If I double click the file name, then I go full screen. I'm just going to enter some blank lines here just so that I can get it to show up for the video then I'll get rid of them. I have price, type, and brand. Oh, well, that should be okay. Get rid of all those extra lines. I need to go over to Books and Clothes Inheritance, which is where my main is, and create an array for, for pants. I'll be lazy and copy and paste that. So this is going to be pants and I'm going to write for pants. I'll make this guy here pants list. So how about dress pants? Yes, I don't know. It's fine. Ways to put that as 32, comma, uh, 28, blue. Let's change the price over here and uh, 28.95. Work pants. I'll do shorts. Use the standard for statement to display all the books. Here's the enhanced for statement to display shirts and be lazy here and copy and paste that. Display all the pants. Call variable P to step through this. Okay, here's a blank line. So pants P just for my for loop. And this is going to be pants list. System dot out dot get in stock at price and get type. That's fine. Except whoops. Copy, paste, paste, paste. Now I want to use the 
two string method. And that'll be easy here. Okay, for now my pants. <coughs> Whoops. Oh, pants. Call this P. Uh, my pant list. Double click up here again so that I'm not in full screen and run the program again. And I have an error. Oh no. Right here. I can look. It's showing that the error is in books and clothes inheritance. Oh, ah, oh, this is nice. So look at that. There's a little mark right here. In class, okay. And what is the error? Oh, I have an S right there. Instead of a P. Okay, try again. Here's the four loops that are displaying items from books, shirts, and pants. And now, here is the uh, for loop that is using to string to display books, shirts, and pants. Enjoy working with Java classes and objects. Bye. See you later. Dandolph, signing off for now.